So let's say I have all of my shots all finished and I'm ready to composite them into one animation. Toon Boom Harmony actually makes this really easy and you can use it sort of like a video editing tool, which is super awesome. So I've created a new scene here and if we go up to our scene, scene settings, you'll see it's the exact same settings as what I have in my original animations, which is 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. But my scene length is pretty short. It's at 60 frames, so let's give ourselves a few more frames to work with. So we're going to go up to Scene, Scene Length, and I'm going to change the number of frames to 1000. And that just gives us some extra space to work with when we're importing our videos. So to import videos, it's pretty much the same as anything else. We go up to File, Import, and Movie. And we'll navigate to where our movies are. So we've exported every scene as a QuickTime movie, but I'll also show you how to import an image sequence. So let's start with scene number one. We'll select it and press open to import it. And we'll get the same pop-up window like we do when we're importing images. We want to create a single layer and it actually won't let you do any additional options for a QuickTime movie. And I want to select keep as original bitmap because it's a lot easier on computer resources rather than converting it to a Toon Boom bitmap. For the alignment, I have it on fit, but we could also set it to project resolution so it stays the same size, even though it won't matter. They're the same size anyway. For alpha, I'll just select straight and then we'll press OK. And here we have our first scene all imported. So moving this movie around is just like working with your animation frames. You can select the first frame, hold down shift, and select the last frame, and then move it around. You can also use the hotkeys of plus and minus to make it go earlier or later in the timeline. This is scene one, so we'll just move it to the first frame. And next, we're going to import our scene two, which I've already exported as an image sequence. So to import an image sequence, we just go up to File, Import, and Images. And then we browse to where our image sequence is. And here I've got it in my scene 2 under the frames folder. And you'll see all of my frames have been exported as a PNG sequence. So to select all of them, I can either click the top one, go down to the bottom, hold shift, and select the bottom one. Or if there are no other images in this folder, I can just press control A. And that selects all of them. So once they're all selected, I'll click open. And you'll see up here, it'll say mini file selected. So here, under Create Layers, we either have the option to rename our layers using Create Single Layer and rename it however we want, or we can create layer based on file names. I'm going to select Create Single Layer and I'll name it after my scene. And again, we want to keep it as original bitmap so it doesn't use that many resources on our computer. And for the rules, I'll set it to Project Resolution and Alpha Straight, and I'll press OK to import that image sequence. So you'll see it's just like our QuickTime movie. It's just a series of frames. So to move it, we just do the same thing as before. Before, select all of our frames and then move it right after scene one so one happens right after the other so using the same method I'll just quickly import my scene three and arrange it where it needs to go so now let's import a quick time that has sound in it we're gonna go up to file import movie and we're gonna select the quick time that we exported that has sound in it so we'll press open so you'll see, it brings up the same dialog as if we're importing an image sequence. So I'm going to create a single layer, and I'm going to name it after my scene, keep all these other settings the same, and press OK. And you'll see at the top that it also imported my sound. So let's move our scene 4 frames, so they're happening right after scene 3. But you'll see when I do that, my sound is still behind, it's still starting on frame 1. So we need to move it so that it's starting on frame 128. Well, one way we could do this is you can actually select the sound in the timeline itself, like so, just like selecting our frames, and then we can click and drag this to frame 128, and it'll move our sound to that frame. The only problem with this is if you don't select the whole sound and you just drag a portion of it, you'll end up breaking your audio and uh, you'll have a gap in between the sound. So uh, you want to make sure you select the whole sound when you do this. A better way is actually to double click on the sound itself, click on the sound up here on the top, and then just like before, we're gonna set our stop frame to way farther than we need, just to give us plenty of room to move it, and we'll set the start frame to 128, and that way it'll be completely accurate. And our sound has now moved to frame 128, and we haven't split it up or broken it or anything, so it does the same thing, it's just probably a more accurate way of working. So now when we play our animation, Our sound also plays along with it. Pretty cool. So let's import our last scene, which is scene 5. So now we have our entire animation all imported.
but you'll see our project lasts for longer than the actual animation, so let's cut it off at frame 644. So we'll go up to Scene, Scene Length, and we'll type 644. And here we have our animation all imported. So you'll notice that my other scenes aren't finished, but hopefully it gives you the idea of what to do once all of your scenes are finished and you're ready to composite it all together. So pretty cool, Toon Boom Harmony is a super robust program. Even the Essentials version, you could do a lot of this stuff that we covered. So now I can export this entire animation by going up to File, Export, and Movie. And just like before, we'll export it as a QuickTime file in the right folder, export my entire frame range, same as scene resolution, and if we had sound, we'd make sure to check the sound option, and then we press OK. So here's our final exported movie. Now we could call it pretty much done here, but I want to show you just a couple neat tricks that you can do to really plus up this compositing stage. And this will apply pretty much exclusively to premium users because it utilizes the node view and certain effects. But you could also do some of these effects in other video editing programs as well. So we have our frame here that we're going to use as an example. We have our node view on the right and our node library at the bottom. So I can see what I'm doing with my effects. I'm going to also hit the render view with this button. And that'll show me what my final render looks like. So here's a really quick and easy way to set up effects for your final animation. So you see here we have our composite node, which is attached to our right node and our display node. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this composite node. So there's a second one. And I'm going to connect these display and right nodes to that second one. And then I'll attach the first composite to the second composite. So right now you can see this is not doing anything. But what this allows us to do is this allows us to take our whole composited animation, add some nodes in between, and then have the effects applied to this composite be what we export. So here's the first really cool trick. We can also drag from this box and drag a second image. So right now it's not doing anything, but there are two of our animations happening one on top of the other. What we can do, I have this under my favorites, but remember, you can always use the search box up here to search for the blending node, which is right here. We'll drag that in, and again, we'll hold Alt to drag it on top. And what this does is it applies blending effects, sort of like Photoshop. So I'm going to use the effect of Add, and you'll see what that does is it really brightens up the image. It makes it super glowy, probably too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a transparency to it so it's not so strong. Again, using Alt-Drag and putting it underneath. But if we click our Transparency node, we'll see it's setting this chain to 50% transparency. So if I turn that off by pressing the D button, you'll see Before, and press A to show afterwards. Before, After. If you want to get even fancier, you could apply a blur to it. I usually use this Blur Radial Blur because it's pretty simple. There's not a lot of bells and whistles to it. So we'll Alt and drag that Blur Radial underneath and we'll set the radius to 5. And you'll see it puts a really nice soft sort of anime sort of style to it. So it's a nice glowy effect. If you want to play around with the blending node, you could do that too. Let's see what happens when we add overlay to it instead. You'll see it gets a little bit more moody. It brings out the saturated colors a lot. So again, all I did was set up two composites. The first one is my original animation. If I were to take my display node and attach it here instead, these effects are not applied. So if you wanted to save on render view times, you could have your display node attached to this old composite and just have your right node attached to this new composite with all these effects added onto it. So pretty cool. A super easy way to make your animation look just ugh, really nice. So that's my whole tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. And be sure to check out more Toon Boom tutorials on the learning portal. Lots of great stuff on there. Some amazing animators worked on the tutorials in there. I highly recommend checking out more stuff. Hope you had fun, and until next time, bye bye